What's up, peers, and welcome back to the World Crypto Network with a reading of Zero Link, the Bitcoin fungibility framework. Part two, or chapter two, part four, DOS attacks. The various ways malicious users can abort around, and there are various ways to defend against it. One, banning IP addresses. Two, complete with a subset. Three, closed source DOS protection. Four, utilization of fidelity bond. And five, banning the registration of provided UTXOs and related UTXOs of malicious analysis. Due to the nature of the anonymity network, which will which tend to use reuse IP addresses, banning IP address should not be utilized. The complete with subset model may be implemented. However, it is not clear if it benefits justify its complexity. A Tumblr may close source its DOS protection algorithm, thus forcing attackers into reverse engineering. Utilization of fielded bonds should not be utilized as it ruins user experience and results in longer rounds. This document recommends a DOS defense based upon the UTXO registration banning technique, which makes it economically infeasible to execute denial of service attacks. In addition, the Tumblr operator must evolve the protection if the need arises. This protection requires the Tumblr to identify the malicious Alice's UTXO it registers as inputs for the coin join. The identification of malicious UTXOs is explained by examining all possible variety of denial of service attacks. Denial of service one. What if an Alice spends her output prematurely? If it happens at input registration phase, the Tumblr should ban malicious Alice. If it happens at a later phase, the round fallback to input registration phase and all so far provided coin join outputs should be banned by the tumblr clients must not ever register with the same coin join output twice even if the round fails otherwise the tumblr could work with that information dos number two what if an alice refuses to sign the same strategy applies to dos one dos three what if a bob does not provide outputs the same strategy is applied as in DOS 1 and DOS 2. The only difference is that Alice, who do not wish to be banned, reveals their registered outputs in the blame phase. A ban should time out after one month. To find the optimal se severity of UTXO banning, the attacker's initial Bitcoin requirements and attack costs are helpful metrics. These metrics are calculated in the document by assuming one Bitcoin Tumblr denomination, $1 network transaction fees, and the attacker is willing to keep up the attack for one day. The most sophisticated attacker can delay the ex execution of a round by a maximum of up to three minutes. Therefore, they can bam a minimum of 24 hours times 60 minutes divided by three minutes is 480 rounds per day. An attacker must to disrupt. For simplicity, this document assumes a malicious Alice only registers one UTXO, and if there are any other UTXOs Alice registers with, the same ban applies to them. Severity zero, no UTXO ban. At that level, at level zero severity, the attacker can re-register and disrupt around as many times as it wants. That means the attack one has its initial Bitcoin requirement of one Bitcoin and the attack costs are zero. Severity one, banning the malicious UTXOs. This, in this case, the most effective attack is the attacker holds 480 Bitcoin. Assuming the attacker does not have 480 Bitcoin pre-divided perfectly into one Bitcoin outputs, the attacker must first pre-divide them and attack with those UTXOs. Pre-dividing such amount is one transaction with 480 outputs. A transaction output is approximately 20% of a transaction, and therefore the cost of this attack is output, 480 outputs times 0 0.2 is 96 euros or dollars. The second attack can be executed with less initial Bitcoin requirements. The attacker can first disrupt around, then make a transaction so that the output of the transaction is not banned, then register that UTXO in the next round. 
Of course, Bitcoin transactions are not instant and the Tumblr only accepts confirmed outputs. Thus, assuming every Bitcoin transaction confirms within 10 minutes, the attacker must have around four Bitcoins to begin with. By not factoring in the pre-divisions, the attacker must make 480 minus 4, 476 transactions to disrupt the Tumblr for day. The costs, 476 euros. Attack, round 1, 480 Bitcoin. Attack cost, $96. Attack 2, 4 Bitcoin. And attack costs are $476. Severity number 2, banning the malicious UTXO and all its sibling UTXOs. The first attack, the, where the attacker holds 480 Bitcoin, does not work anymore. Because of the pre-division, all the UTXOs would be banned. Therefore, the attacker would have to do is to pre-divide its coins in a different way. It cannot create one big transaction, instead it creates 480 transactions. Thus, the attacker costs $480. The, attacker, the second attack results in exactly 480 transactions, too. Attack 1 with 480 Bitcoin, cost of $480. And attack 2 with 4 Bitcoin comes up with attack cost of $480. Severity 3, 4, 5, and 6. To impose additional costs for the second type of attack, the tumbler can ban the outputs of the transactions that spend the malicious output. In this case, the attacker has to do one extra transaction to be able to use its coin for attacking again. After the pre-division, the attacker can disrupt four rounds, spend its banned malicious output each one twice, and then note that spending an unconfirmed output is valid. The result is 2 times 4 equals 8 transactions to disrupt 4 or more rounds. Then spends 8 more transactions or so on. The final transaction count will be 480 minus 4 times 2, 952. This means with an initial Bitcoin requirement of 480 Bitcoins, the attack cost is 480 euros. And with 4 Bitcoin, the attack cost is 492 euros. The higher the severity is, the higher the attack costs are. The issue is increasing severity might result in banning honest actors about the misc. mix. If honest actors get their coins from malicious ones, therefore severity should be kept at a level 2 and only be increased if needed. imposing additional attack costs to attackers with huge initial Bitcoin reserves. Moving the other direction on the transaction chain towards the parent of the malicious UTXO and banning them and, in, and their children from participating in future mixes imposes additional costs for the attacker with huge initial Bitcoin reserves. Such strategies should be used only if needed because it assumes the parent UTXO and their children are controlled by the attacker. This assumption increases the possibility of banning honest actors. Lowering denomination. By calculating the metrics, the Tumblr denomination of one Bitcoin was assumed. Lowering this does not affect the attacker. The attack cost, it only affects the initial Bitcoin requirements. Dependence on high Bitcoin transaction fees. The attack costs calculated assumed a $1 Bitcoin transaction fee. The proposed denial of service defense in the zero fee environment is not sufficient. Can the system be bypassed by Bitcoin exchanges, mixers, or similar services? The attack cost cannot be bypassed using such services. It would only impose additional costs on the attacker and introduce a third party risk. The fourth denial of service, what if Bob provides a signed output in the wrong round? Another denial of service attack was identified by Anton Walter. If Bob refuses to provide an output in the round it acquired its signature, then the corresponding Alice gets banned in signing phase because she will not provide signatures to the coin join. However, Bob's output will never be unblinded. Therefore, at output registration phase, the Tumblr does not know if the output has been signed in the correct round or in a previous round. In order to disrupt the round, Alice can keep acquiring signatures at the expense of having her UTXO banned and providing outputs to incorrect rounds. 
For privacy reasons, the Tumblr must refuse the same blinded signature to be registered twice in the output registration phase. And the Tumblr must refuse the same active output to be registered twice in the output registration phase. This already makes it uneconomical to keep this attack up for too long. But Zerolink introduces an ex extension to the Chaumian CoinJoin protocol to completely defend against this attack. One, at connection confirmation phase, for Alice's connection confirmation request, the Tumblr answers with a hash of all the inputs called a round hash. At output registration phase, this round hash must be provided to the Tumblr by Bob. At signing phase, when Alice acquires the coin join, she must check if the round hash is indeed the hash of all inputs. The question arises, why not use the random round identifier instead of round hash? It is because the Tumblr could trick Alice into providing them different round identifiers and with that information de-anonymizing the round. Piers, thank you for joining me here at Chapter 2, Part D on Denial of Service Attacks of the Zero-Link Bitcoin Fungibility Framework. Thank you very much for joining and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.